Hey Ape Scholars, in today's video, we're gonna go over everything you need to know about writing Apes FRQs, and we're also gonna cover the three concepts most likely to show up on that Unit 1 Test FRQ. Before we get started though, make sure to sign up for your free preview of the Ultimate Review Packet and grab the FRQ walkthrough sheet so you can follow along as we go through the tips in this video. All right, now that you've got that FRQ walkthrough sheet, let's go through some tips and tricks to make sure you're ready to write like a scholar when you get that first Apes FRQ. Now, on the final exam in May, you'll have 70 minutes to write three FRQs. And these FRQs have a really consistent format. The first one is gonna be based on an experiment. The second one is gonna have some kind of stimulus like a map or graph, and you'll have to propose a solution to an environmental problem. And the final FRQ will involve three math problems with the calculate task verb. If you wanna deep dive into each of these three separate formats so that you're totally ready for that exam in May, there's a playlist linked in the upper right hand corner of this video and in the video description below. But today we'll be focusing on five general tips and strategies that are gonna help you out on any FRQ so that you can apply these right away on that unit one test. Now, if your teacher is anything like me, they'll probably give you one full FRQ, which has 10 subparts or 10 points, and they'll give you 23 minutes or so to write that FRQ. But make sure to ask your teacher what the FRQs on your unit one test will look like so you're not surprised come test day. Now, regardless of how many FRQs or what type of FRQs you see on that unit one test, these next tips and tricks will help you write like a scholar and earn as many points as possible. Now, the first tip before you write any APES FRQs is to know your task verb. Every individual prompt or question within an FRQ will have a bold task verb, which will tell you exactly how to structure your answer. And the College Board tells us in the course and exam description exactly how to answer each of these different task verbs, but we can do better than that. What I've done is taken this task verb breakdown from the College Board and my 10 years of experience giving and grading FRQs with released exam rubrics and simplified it into this neat FRQ task verb sheet that I give my students whenever they write an FRQ in class. I would even ask your teacher if you can use this FRQ task verb sheet in class so that you know exactly how to structure your answers for each of these different task verbs. And if your teacher's a little hesitant, just remind them it'll make their work easier grading these FRQs because you won't yap on and on and write longer answers than you need. Now, there's no magic rule that says you have to write two sentences for a describe question or three sentences for an explain question. But this is my general rule of thumb from reading 25 years of release exam FRQ scoring guides, because when we see those answers in the scoring guide year after year, they typically require two distinct layers of detail on describe questions and three distinct layers of detail on explain questions. And so sticking to those sentence requirements is a really helpful way to make sure you're giving enough depth to earn those points. All right, tip number two is to learn to recognize whether an individual part of an FRQ is a skill-based question or a content-based question. Every FRQ has a couple prompts that require little to no specific environmental science knowledge and instead, these questions require you to identify a point on a graph, describe a trend in data, or write a hypothesis about a given scientific investigation. And the reason this is so important is you don't wanna skip any of these skill-based questions because you may be able to get them right just with the information provided and no recall of the content you learned in class. Now, the third tip is closely related to tip two, which is to make sure you answer the easiest FRQ questions first. Since every individual question on an FRQ, except the calculate questions, are worth one point, you'll wanna make sure to answer these easier questions while you're mentally fresh and less likely to make a mistake. The calculation questions are the only two point questions on the exam. And in those questions, you get one point for the correct setup and one point for the correct answer. So start with the easier identify questions or the skill-based questions that are based on a stimulus and then come back to those describe and explain content-based questions later. Or feel free to skip the one or two hardest describe and explain questions if you know that you don't know the answer. That frees up more time to answer other questions and you can still earn a five averaging seven or eight points out of 10 on these FRQs. All right, our fourth tip is to be precise and concise. This means replacing eco slang with vocab terms and replacing yapping with clear scientific language. Every year when I grade FRQs with the College Board, I'm amazed at how many students yap and yap and yap on a question, wasting tons of time and writing and earning no points on that question. Not only does yapping and using eco slang like green or unhealthy or unnatural earn you no points, but it also wastes valuable time that you could be answering questions that you actually know the answer to. I want to circle back to my rule of thumb here and remind you to try to limit yourself to two sentences max on describe questions and three sentences max on explain questions to limit the yapping. And if you don't believe me that two or three sentences is enough, just look at this scoring guide for this released exam FRQ and notice how none of the answer options are longer than two lines. Precision and vocab beats yapping and fluff 
every time. If you want a deeper dive into avoiding eco slang and using vocab turns, check out my Write Like a Scholar series linked in the upper right hand corner and the video description below. Now, the fifth and final tip is to make sure that your answers for each FRQ are directly connected to the prompt. See, a lot of times students do something called giving a great answer to the wrong question. To avoid this, I want you to think of two parts that every single question will have the frame and the target. The target is what the task verb is referring to and it's what your answer has to be about or directly connected to. And the frame is the context or any modifiers in the question that your answer has to fall within. For example, in this FRQ, the summertime weather conditions are what we actually need to describe. So they would be the target. And the frame is the increase in frequency of smog. So your answer needs to connect summertime weather conditions to an increase in smog. And it needs to have two layers of detail and a max of two sentences since it's a described prompt. And notice how each of these answers in the scoring guide for this question have two parts, a clear summer weather condition linked to a clear way or mechanism of smog increasing. All right, Ape Scholars, those are your five tips to make sure you write a ball in FRQ no matter what type of question you get. But we can get even more specific and talk about that unit one test that's coming up and what terms you might see on that FRQ. Now, I can't promise you these will be on your test FRQ, but I can tell you that I keep putting them on my students unit one test FRQ because they keep showing up on APES exams year after year. The first topic is 1.2 or biome characteristics. Now my 1.2 video focuses more on the why behind biome distribution and trends. But if you want a video that reviews the basic characteristics of each biome, Mr. W, who is a fellow APES teacher and YouTuber has an awesome video that does a deep dive into the terrestrial biome characteristics. The second topic is actually a pair of topics. That's 1.4 and 1.5, the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. Now, APES FRQs especially tend to focus on combustion of fossil fuels and how that really fast carbon cycle process leads to elevated CO2 in the atmosphere and drives climate change. And for the nitrogen cycle, FRQs tend to focus on fixation or the process of bacteria in the soil or rhizobacteria in the root nodules of some plants fixing N2 gas from the atmosphere, converting it into ammonium, which is bioavailable for plants to use in the soil. And the third topic is 1.10 or the 10% rule. And on APES FRQs, this often comes up in the form of explaining why there's less energy available at higher trophic levels and why tertiary consumers or top predators typically need lots of land beneath them to support their energy needs. Now, if you want a deeper look into these must know topics that are likely to show up on your unit one FRQs and MCQs, you can check out a free preview of the ultimate exam slayer. For each unit, there's an extra unit tips and over video that covers the must know FRQ and MCQ concepts in a bit more depth and provides a tips and overview sheet that you can use to follow along. All right, Ape Scholars, thanks for watching today. If you're getting ready for your unit one test, you can check out the unit one ultimate review packet summary video right here. Or if you want a deeper dive into everything FRQ writing, you can check out this playlist right here. But whatever you check out next, always remember to think like a mountain and write like a scholar.